we have people who have uh, taken the Great Commission, not just to their neighbours uh, or to their work, work colleagues or to their universities or wherever, but they have been called by God to also take it overseas. Hello, Jordan. Jordan, thank you for your service. I know that's probably a terrible salute, but anyways, thank you for your service, Jordan. And I'm so glad you're here. That's awesome. So good. Wonderful. Anyway, sorry. I just saw Jordan. Anyone know Jordan Kingsley? Yes. Everyone's like, Jordan Batterby. No, no, what? <laughs> Jordan, we love you, Jordan. I'm so glad you came back here. That's awesome. You're a legend. Are you coming out after? Yes. Come out for dinner, friends. Hang out with the family after church. It's good. Anyways, back to tonight. We have Mick, who's going to be sharing first, and then Steve, and wrapping up with Margot. And uh, as I was saying, they've gone, as the Bible says, go into all the world. Go and make disciples of all the nations. And I love that these three are doing that. They've gone to other parts of the world, given up of what they knew here in Australia to go overseas as God has called them. They've said yes, they've become the chosen. And I love that. And so I know you're going to be blessed, but I also pray that you are challenged and inspired to be the missionary that you can be wherever God calls you. Uh, to be that missionary. And so come on, why don't you stand to your feet? Uh, Because we're not gonna be able to honour all three of them as they come to the platform. But I want you to give them a massive welcome and honour them and put your hands together. And let's welcome up Mick to come and preach tonight. God bless you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thanks, guys. What a humbling experience, seriously. Um, I'm here tonight, most of all, because this is Mission Sunday, and you guys are a huge part of our ministry in Casa Segura and have been for many years. And I just want to encourage you, I can see so many young people and old people out there, that if you have a heart to do something in missions or to go anywhere, do it. Because the first step is our step in faith and that's when God follows up behind and He never lets us down. Because I've been in Bolivia now for 20 years and um, that makes me a little bit old, I guess. And God has never, ever let me down in, in my walk in faith. And I just wanna say, that's my family. And it's a big one and they're special because each one of those children has been selected by God. Some of them have been orphaned, some of them have been abandoned, some of them have been abused. Each child has their own story where they've come from and where they're going. And God's a God of individuality. Where he works with each one of us personally on a special, in a special way. So these kids not only have been forgotten in life, every, every child there has grown up in Casa Segura since they were either four, five, six, seven years old. And now we, um, we've got to a stage after so many years later and they're leaving like all kids do eventually. So this is a special time because Casa Segura now is moving on to a a new stage in in life, I guess, where a lot of the kids are um, moving away, going away to study. Some don't want to do anything. But seriously, it's a a stage now. And if you can see Paddy and Diego, the couple there on on, um, your right, they're from Paraguay and they're God sent. Um, they've been sent to help us at Casa Segura. So now we have, with the bigger kids leaving, we have room for newer kids to come in and also have the opportunity to be raised at Casa Segura and, and receive, most of all, the love from God. Because really, it's amazing how hurt and bruised some of the kids come to Casa Segura, um, struggling for whatever happened. For an example, one, one boy, Joel, um, I can't even see him at the moment, I've gone lost. 
He's not there. <laughs> That's why I can't see him. One of the boys, Joel, who came to Casa Segura, um, went to the bus stop one day with his mum. She got on the bus and left with his little brother and left him at the bus station. And can you imagine being seven years old and just be standing and left behind at a bus station? So these are kids that come in and they're hurt. And what I've seen over the years, it's not what I do or it's not what we do as a, as a group or as a family, is it's the love of God that comes within the family that heals their hearts. And each child now gets the opportunity to grow up in a family environment and move on. And um, that's where the special thing comes in, where each child gets to follow their heart and their dream. And that's what we do at Casa Segura, is help each child go on to follow their dreams because we all have a special reason. Now I've got some, as I said, without you guys behind me, all the work we do is impossible. And I've got some very special friends over in the crowd there tonight that have been supporting me since day one for many, many years. And these are the people that, that help us on the mission field keep working because we can go and have all intentions to do great things for God, but without you guys behind us, we can't do anything. And that's, um, that's amazing. And I, I hear that um, Pastor Joe and his wife were going to come to visit us, Casa Segura, a few years ago, but then of course, like the rest of the world, COVID hit and stopped plans. But I encourage you guys to keep that dream and come and visit us because it'd be amazing. Seriously, you're very welcome. And um, yeah, and also I, was, I met with Nikki a couple of weeks ago for lunch and she was saying that how you guys, first of all, this church is amazing. I, I can't believe how many people and missions you support. It's fantastic and you guys are a, a huge part of that. So it's, this church is doing amazing work all over the world. So as I was saying, met with Nikki for lunch and she was um, explaining to me about the, the, the gifts and the boxes that you give to children. So we have some photos. This is a few years ago at Casa Segura, but I just want to know that these kids are all lined up. They're frightened, they're scared, they have no idea what's happening. And then they receive their gift. And you have no idea how that touches the children on a personal level because each gift and each box they open is specially for them. They're all different and um, so these boxes and gifts that you're making and, and giving to the children that um, it's a special Christmas, really, because normally they wouldn't get the opportunity to receive a gift. So I just want to encourage you to know that your boxes go to good use and they put smiles and, and happiness in, in all these kids. Could I have one of these waters? Yeah. Yep, thanks. Wow, so, yeah. Now what we're doing at Casa Segura, as I mentioned, all these kids are growing up and a lot of them are, are moving away from home. We've got kids that, the, first of all, the main thing is that every child at Casa Segura has got to know God. And that is the most important thing. What they do with their futures is, is up to them and, and God on a personal level. So all the kids, now we've got so many that are going away to study. We've got um, one guy that was studying to be a pilot. We have another girl that just graduated this week from nursing. And um, we've got kids that are studying in university for journalism. We have another at music academy. So these are the things. And we have one girl, Elida, who has a big plan to, to go to Argentina next year when she graduates to study the Bible. And um, so these opportunities are all available for the kids because of the work and because of you guys and because of everything. So I'm encouraging you to, to continue to help for all these ministries here from, from Emerge Church. It's an absolute blessing. So um, if, we, if we could move on, because stage two, um, to make room for new kids in the, in the home, we have a, a place in town now, because we live on 15 hectares out in the jungle of Bolivia. And um, for those of you um, who are new and don't know, we have 15 hectares of farmland in Bolivia. It's an absolute blessing. And these are the bigger boys that have grown up at Casa Segura, and we have a small home in town where they're living at the moment. 
And that's them um, cleaning up. They came in to paint and, and move on. But these kids are making room for new kids that are going to come in and um, Patty and Diego are going to be there to, to um, help raise the new group of children. So our, our plan is we have 15 hectares, as I, I mentioned. At the back of the land, um, we're going in with machetes and axes, literally clearing the jungle by hand, and we'll be building a new um, living quarters for the older children that, that move on. Some of them um, are still at school at 18 years old, so they're going to get the opportunity to continue living at Casa Segura, but also finish their studies and follow their dreams as well. So we have um, a small video of us. Here the boys, um, every day after school, they, the younger ones come and help us, and we're literally in the jungle cutting down trees and to clear two hectares of land. And it's a hard job, it takes about a year because we have no tractors or machinery. So it's gonna take about a year to um, clear the land and build a new home for the, the older kids of Casa Segura. So guys, thank you so much, seriously, for being part of our work. Thank you so much for all your support. And um, just know when you're in your prayer time, to pray for us and um, know that your prayers and help are, are really a blessing. So thank you and um, God bless. And then you can see that's where our new home is going to be. And that's me. <laughs> that's what I do. I did my years of clearing. So God bless you all and thank you so much. And um, yeah, keep us in prayers. Thank you. Well, hello. hello, hello. I, I think most people know me, so I'm not going to go into introducing myself, but it is a massive honour for Margo and I to be back here again. This is home for us, right? We've been coming to this church for 25 years or something, and uh, to come back here and to be a part of this church family is a great blessing for us, so it's really emotional. We love being back, so thank you. And you're going to hear it a lot tonight, but you know we couldn't do what we do without you guys. Um, as has been said numerous times, and you'll hear it again, your giving, your love, your prayer is what enables us to do what we do. And it's a huge blessing. So um, I'm going to share a few things about what I do. Um, so for those of you who don't know, um, I'm a pilot with Mission Aviation Fellowship. And uh, Mission Aviation Fellowship's all over the world. But we, my wife and I, we serve in Liberia, which is in West Africa. If you don't know where that is, you can Google it later. But it's right on the western side of Africa. It's very hot and humid. And um, we, we serve there and uh, we've been there for four years. And uh, we do a lot of work in and out of very remote areas in Liberia. Liberia is one of the poorest countries in the world. The roads there are shockingly bad. And so I get the immense honour of working with missionaries like this man over here that are there doing the work, that are working with people on the ground and I get to fly them in and out. And I get to spend time with them. I get to pray with them. I get to be a part of their lives and get a part of what they do. And so I wanna share a few things with you. Um, a few photos here just to help you see what's happening. So we did a lot of work during COVID, um, getting um, COVID medicine, um, vaccines in and out of very remote areas in Liberia when COVID hit. Um, there's a lot that we had a lot of issues in Liberia with people obviously are already very sick uh, with other, you know, uh, issues. And so COVID really wasn't really the greatest thing for them. And so we did a lot of work in and out of um, Liberia, in and out of Liberia in very remote areas. We also do a lot of medivacs. So hang on, hang on, it's going far too far. Stop, come back. There we go. There we go. Look at that. I can fly a plane, but I can't press a button. Here we go. So... <laughs> Um, Margot and I, Margo and I, we do, uh, I, I do a lot of medivacs and you can see Margot there as well. Um, we get to work together a lot, which is really nice. And um, it's very remote areas and people there just don't have access to the medical uh, care that they need in really remote areas. And so you can see um, this guy was hit by a, uh, a motorbike. 
uh, this lady had a really had a stroke. You know, they're out in the middle of nowhere and they have no access to medical care. And so we're able to go in there and get them, get them back to uh, the main hospital. Some of the roads are so bad, it can take three or four days to get somewhere. It takes me literally an hour and a half to fly in the plane. So you can imagine that it's, it's a death sentence for them if these things happen and we can't get to them. So, um, yeah, and, you know, it's... Nice photos. But uh, I, I get to fly in some really beautiful country as well, which is really nice. I just put these in just because it's really nice. <laughs> I like to see the areas we fly in. There you go. So this here, um, one of the things we get to do is work with missionaries who are going in and translating uh, the Bible. And this is Mark Shepherd. Uh, he and his family have been in Liberia for many, many years. But for the last nine years, they've been translating the Bible into the local language where they live, uh, where there is no Bible at all in the local dialect. And so that that you can see me holding there is the newly finished New Testament in in their language. And I was I, I did a lot of work with them, flying them in and out. They live in a very remote um, area. It's a it's a mainly a Muslim sort of area, and um, he's translated the the New Testament. And so he's going to Israel for six months to learn Hebrew, and he's going to start on the Old Testament. So it's going to take him a lot longer, I assume. <laughs> Uh, but this is the sort of thing I get to do every day and it's such a huge blessing. There's me in the in a little Muslim village and uh, one of the missionaries there that I get to fly around. So this guy here, this is Kim Smith. Kim Smith is a missionary um, in a very remote area of Liberia, way up on the border of the Ivory Coast. And I, did a, I, I fly him all the time. He's a great guy. He gets in and out. He does a lot of work with training pastors, training local leaders, um, and doing teacher training, like pastor training for them because there are many pastors out in the middle of nowhere that don't have any access to um, any training whatsoever. Margot and I were in Korong two days ago, I couldn't believe, we walked, there's Bibles everywhere. In Liberia, they have no access to this sort of thing. They have nothing. And so there are pastors there that are literally pastors because they're the only Christian in their village. And so now they're the pastor. That's how it works. They've had no training at all. No training, Pastor Joe, nothing. So uh, Kim, Kim gives them training. He goes and gets the motorbike. He brings them into their village and he gives them training. And I get to fly him in and out to his um, area. But this flight that we did, uh, we, it was a few months ago now, we loaded the plane with French Bibles. They're quite close to the Ivory Coast. And um, we, I flew over a thousand kilos of Bibles up to Zwedru, which is this little village. He loads them on a motorcycle. He takes them over the border and he hands them out to Muslim French, Muslim, Sierra Leone, uh, um, Ivory Coast people, and he's putting Bible in their hands. And the only way they're able to get up there is because uh, Mission Aviation were able to fly them into these remote areas. And so it's such a huge blessing to be able to do that. And, you know, at the end of the day, we can, we can um, put on all sorts of shows and everything, but it's, the, it's, the, it's God's Word that brings salvation to people. Because it's like Paul said, we're not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. And if we can put Bibles in people's hands, then that is the power to get them saved. And that's what he's doing. And so that's us doing that flight there, which was awesome. There's all the Bibles uh, at the other end waiting to be picked up on the motorbikes. Uh, and this is one of the missionaries that uh, are down on the, uh, on the southern border with the Ivory Coast. And they are translating the Bible into their local language as well. And so I, I get to work with these guys and I'm flying him and his family back after some furlough that they had and they had some supplies. And so that's what I get to do. It's such a huge honour. There he is there. And I put this photo because I thought it was cute and the girl's nice too. Um, yeah, thank you. That was a, yeah, thanks. That was a very poor joke. But um, yeah, so the other thing we get to do is I, I've been very privileged to be able to have um, kids come into the hangar and, um, you know, really poor kids in local area. And we've, MAF have been able to give them a little bit of money and we give them a little shirt and a uniform and, you know, they go off to school or dressed as a pilot or whatever. And um, it's, we pray with their we, we pray with their parents and we explain to them what we do and why we're there. And it's a, it's a, great, um, it's a great witnessing tool. So this is the last photo. And um, that photo's there because I want to share with you what we're doing next. There's a little bit of a move for Margot and I. <clears throat> Pardon me. Got a couple of minutes left. <clears throat> Pardon me. Margot and I are following God's leading in everything that we do. And um, one of the things that God's um, calling us to next is we're moving to a different area. And Margot and I have actually left Liberia. 
So we are moving back to Australia, but I'm still working with Mission Aviation Fellowship. We're gonna be living in North Queensland and I'm gonna be instructing. I'm gonna be teaching new math pilots to become math pilots and to be able to go out and do what I've been doing. And so it's a, it's a real leading of God because it's gonna be a greater influence that I'm gonna have on all these pilots that are going out to do what I've been doing. And I'm gonna to get to travel. I'm gonna work in Papua New Guinea, do some work in Timor, do some work in North Australia with the math pilots up there. But it's a great privilege to be able to do that. So we, we still need your support. We still need your love. We still need your prayer. But I'm going to be able to do lots of training, working with these guys who have, who have like us, moved to the other side of the world, away from their families, and uh, they need teaching and they need training. And so that's what I'm going to get to do next. So it's, it's a real great honour. And that's why that photo is there. So I just, again, I just want to thank you, guys. We love you. We love this church family. We thank you for all you've done for us and supported us. Thank you for your continued support because we couldn't do what we do without you. But now you're going to hear the star of the show because <laughs> while I'm out flying around enjoying myself, Margot has been doing some awesome stuff. So she's going to come up and tell you all about it. Thank you. Yeah, so like Stephen, I, it's, I just love coming back here and seeing all you guys. Just it's, it's our family here and we miss you when we're away and it's always really nice to come back and visit. Um, I'm going to get straight into it because I've got a lot I want to say. So um, I am a nurse and for most of the time I've been in Liberia, I have been working in the mission hospital there. Um, however, this year I was led into a, uh, some, some different things and it's been a big year for me and it's been a busy year for me. Um, I think it was good that I cut down on my time in the hospital. So to work in any sort of healthcare position in a third world country is very challenging very confronting. It's a lot of really, really awful things that you see. And I think sort of at the start of this year, um, it had started to affect me. It, you can't help, but it affects you. And so I had opportunity to step into something else. Um, I've continued to do a little bit of work at the hospital, but I um, the main thing I have done this year is, along with a couple of Liberian colleagues, we've opened a women's crisis shelter, which I'm going to talk to you about. Um, now, how do I get... Let me just see if this will... Hang on. Go... There we go. So before I talk about that, I'll just go through a few of the other things I do. I do a lot of fundraising. So I use a platform called DonorSee, and it's a video-based platform where you find various people in need. Well, I don't have to find them, they come to me. And you are able to do a project for them. So I've done lots of small projects. Um, I've raised over 100,000 US now over the last year or, or so. Most of them are just a couple of hundred dollars, a few hundred dollars, some of them are bigger. Home of Hope obviously was quite a few thousand dollars. Um, but I just popped this one in because this is a family of four children. Um, his name is Josiah and they wanted their children to go to school. So one of my projects was that we raised the school fees for the whole year for all four children. And this is them coming back to show me their certificates. Yeah. And Josiah is, he's just so sweet. He, he does have a job. He earns about $100 a month working as a security guard on our compound. And so I see him quite regularly. And every time I see him, he's like, oh, thank you, thank you. You did so well for me. Thank you. God bless you. He calls me mummy. So in Liberia, it's, it's, it was very hard to get used to, but a term of respect, they'll call you mummy or daddy. And so they go, thank you, mummy. Thank you. How are you going, mummy? And... It's, it's hard to get used to. So Josiah is always, always, thank you, Mummy, you did so well. And it's, it's been such a blessing. This one, this is just an example. This is Fatu. She was another project I did. She was diagnosed with cancer and had no money for treatment. So the photo on your left is the ask video I did for her where I said, 
Fatu's got cancer and she's got no money for treatment. She has a child. She has no family support. The photo on the right is after her project was funded and she's just started her first chemo treatment. So this sort of thing is just such a joy to be a part of. Yeah, clap. Why not? It's awesome. Yeah. Um, the other thing we did this year is we fostered another little newborn baby, uh, just briefly. So this is Calvin, and uh, he was born with hydrocephalus, so um, he will most likely end up with some sort of disability. Hydrocephalus is fluid in the brain, um, and his mother was actually scared of him. She was only 16, and she had just didn't know what to do with him was scared of him, so I took him home and then myself and another one of the MAF families, we fostered him and got him, he had surgery where they placed a shunt which helps to treat the hydrocephalus and by the grace of God, a miracle happened and his mother has actually taken him back. So yeah, his, yeah. I, we, I, I said to my colleagues at first, do you think Rita would, would take him back if we get him through surgery? And my, my colleagues said, no, don't even bother praying for it. Well, I still prayed and it's a miracle she took him back and is now caring for him. So that was a really happy story. Oh, there's, yep, there's Calvin, my little Calvin. The little Calvinator, I call him. <laughs> um, so this brings me to Home of Hope. The lady standing with me is Annette. She's a social worker and she is my very dear friend. We, we call each other sisters. We put our, our black arm and our white arm together and say, don't even worry, we're sisters. Um, we've worked closely together over the last few years and we noticed a need for women's uh, crisis shelter, basically. We kept coming across young women and girls, a lot of teenage girls, um, who were living on the street, had nowhere to go. Um, we would, I would sometimes do various projects for them, like if they got pregnant and needed a hospital birth or they needed, you know, um, various things they might need. But then we would send them on their way, basically back to the street. So we kept hoping that we would find a place where we could send these young girls, couldn't find a place, so we decided to do it ourselves. So this is the day Annette and I signed the lease on our rental home. So we have started fairly small. We have um, room for pretty much 12 guests and they will stay for three to six months. And what we do is we give them love. We have carers there. We have security as well. We teach them the Word of God. They all have to go to church on Sunday. They all go to Wednesday Bible study. They have devotions every day. Our carers are all Christians. The carers are slightly older women, mature, mature in the Lord. Um, we give them some vocational training and we empower them, basically. We give them trauma healing classes because they've all pretty much come out of, of some sort of trauma. So this is the day we opened um, and that's myself with, I have two directors, three carers and three security and that was a very exciting day. That was in May and this is just some of our guests. This is Martha Lynn, she's 15 and pregnant. This is Rosetta, um, that's Angeline. This is Angel, you can see she was beaten up. These photos are what we take when they first arrive so they generally don't look too happy. This is Safi. So Safi was a Muslim and she was abandoned and she arrived to us actually quite badly beaten up. We had to get her treated at the hospital. And Safi became a Christian and she is now actually in drug rehab. She has had the most tragic and terrible past and has been terribly traumatised. And we actually got to a point where she... We actually love Safi, but she's very volatile, she's quite violent, and she has been living on the streets and she has been using drugs. And so we were actually able to find a place that does drug rehab and Home of Hope is, is putting her through that. And then when she's finished her rehab, she'll come back to us. So that's really exciting for us because she's got two small children and she was, um, you know, prostituting herself to, to feed her drug habit and... 
Such a sad story. And she has hope now. This is a picture of some of the guests in, in the home. Of course, we, we do end up with quite a few pregnant girls um, and they love to pose for a photo. <laughs> This is some of the new guests. They're sitting around having training in our code of conduct. So when they arrive, we have a code of conduct that they have to sign and we talk about their behaviour and that they'll attend church and they help with the cooking and cleaning and they have to attend trauma healing classes and vocational training classes and things like that. We also have some school-aged girls. So we've made a deal with the local school. They give us free... Um, we don't have to pay for school tuition. We just have to raise the money for their uniforms and chairs and books and things like that. So that's our three schoolgirls that we currently have. Uh, this is, you saw this photo before that Nikki showed. This is the Bibles. That's our Home of Hope office there. And that's James and Annette. They're the two directors. And um, we were so grateful for those Bibles. Yeah, because as Stephen said before, it's actually not easy to come by. So that was a real blessing for us that you guys did that. Uh, this is the trauma healing class. So it's an eight-week course that they all have to be a part of. So all of these girls do have trauma. There's, they've, a lot of them have been living on the street. They've had um, children that have died from hunger. They've been abused. 75% of, of Liberian women have been raped. So there's, there's all sorts of um, abuse and trauma in their past. So the trauma healing classes are really important. It's actually a Christian course that they do. And vocational training. So the last one we did was soap making. So the girls did, uh, we got a teacher in and she taught them how to make all sorts of different types of soap. And they now know how to make and sell soap. So we have, they've done, it, it was probably about four months of training, a couple of days a week. And they've learnt all about how to do it. So now they can actually leave the home. They can go and buy their own supplies. They can make their soap and they can go out and sell it and support themselves. Yeah. So this brings me to the graduation. So we had our first group of girls graduate. We had six girls graduate because we did have more girls, but some of them actually need to stay a little longer and some of them are school girls. So this is our first six girls that graduated and we had a nice little ceremony for them. And Amanda spoke on behalf of the girls at the ceremony and she said, some of us had lost hope, but Home of Hope brought us joy. And she said, and we will not go back to the street. So that was, that was really nice to hear her say that, yeah. Um, oh, hang on, let me go back. Sorry, there is a, a one minute video at the end. This is where we also gave them some supplies to take with them. Um, we gave them a mattress and some cooking pots and things like that because these girls have nothing. So uh, there is a one minute video which I'll play um, momentarily. But I want to say, even though we are now moving back to Australia, um, I will continue to be the CEO of Home of Hope, certainly for the, the time being. And we'll, I'll be making trips back over there. Some of you might like to join me sometime, once a year or once every two years. Um, I'm going to be fundraising a lot. So you, you know, you'll hear from me probably with that. Um, and we're, gonna, we're hoping to do expand next year. We're looking at possibly buying land and building a, a purpose-built place. At the moment, we're renting a house. Um, but the need is so great. And it's really changing lives. And it's incredibly fulfilling to be a part of. Um, and I'll just play this little one-minute video, um, which I just made for an end-of-year sort of thing. <laughs> if I, now... now Will it play now? <laughs>
Yeah, so um, I'm incredibly excited about moving forward with Home of Hope. Um, and that is it from me. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Before you go, can you do something for us, please? Yeah. In the room are people like you and Steve and Mick when you first started out when you were in youth group, when you were in young adults, when you were attending your local church. And inside of you, there was a calling. There was dreams, there was desires. And I'd love for you to pray over us tonight that uh, not only those dreams would be called out, but that people would have the confidence to lean into that uh, and actually go and do and be who God has called them to be, if you would. Thank you. Yeah, okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you that you have placed dreams inside of our hearts, that you have called us to various different places and some of us you've called us to faraway places. Father, I pray that those of us here tonight who have such a calling on their life will not waste the years away and one day look back and say, I wanted to do that. Father, I pray that you would show them the way, lead them, guide them, help them to know that in their own strength they can't do it, but in you they can. Father, I pray that you would help each person here to know it's never too late and it can be done because with you all things are possible. Remind people every morning when we wake up, we only have one life to live, let's not waste it. And that one day we all stand before God and we'll look back on our lives. Father, help us to make our lives worthwhile for you because you are the most important thing. And there are people out there that are going to hell and there are people like us that can be a part of bringing them into your kingdom. Thank you for that honour. Thank you so much for that honour, Lord, that you allow us to be part of that. We love you, Lord, and we thank you that you give us strength, you give us joy and you're beside us every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.